I've been on YouTube for many years and I do get asked a lot of questions but the question that seems to come up the most is can I melt cast iron with propane? Well the answer to that is sure you can and that's what this video is going to be all about to show you how to melt cast iron with propane and quite a few tips along the way to make it a bit easier for you. The first thing about propane is it's not a gas, it's actually a liquid inside this bottle and when they're full they're about up to here and what happens is that liquid needs to evaporate and when you're using gas in a furnace the liquid level will drop down and will get colder and it must evaporate now I'll show you a little demonstration here this is alcohol now when I go like that it gets very cold and the same thing happens with this bottle as it gets emptier it gets colder and colder and evaporates far less propane gas so when the liquid propane gets colder and colder you'll notice with your furnace that the flame will disappear down the exhaust vent and you'll have to keep turning up the regulator to compensate and another thing you'll see is you'll know the level of the propane this part from down here to here will be all frosted up and when that happens that can be very annoying and you can't concentrate on actually working on the furnace when you are melting cast iron so there is two ways you can do it one is to put a tub a larger one than that and fill it full of hot water and the other way to do it is to have two gas bottles and you have a common manifold connected between two bottles and when one starts to cool down you can turn down that one and turn on the other one another tip when using propane don't use these barbecue regulators they put out very little gas flow and it won't be enough to melt cast iron you may be able to melt aluminium but don't use these they are useless ones you've got to use are the welding regulators that will put a decent flow into the furnace this is the regulator I use when I want to melt cast iron with propane it's an acetylene regulator but I'm using it with propane and this is my preferred method of using a gas bottle this is a 45 kilo bottle it does not tend to frost up as easily as the smaller bottles do but when it comes to being close to being empty exactly the same problem occurs so I need to have a full 9 kilo bottle as you've seen earlier in the video to use as a backup when this one starts to frost up this is my propane furnace and there is the propane burner now a lot of people seem to think that you need some sort of a jet or as the Americans say an orifice now we've got a really long rod here and we'll poke it up there and that rod is five millimeters in diameter there's nothing in there we'll have a look inside the furnace and there you can see it there's the rod there what people think is the propane burners like that are naturally aspirated they have to use a jet or an orifice to actually create the induction so it drags in the air but with this one it's not needed because I'm running a blower in this case a vacuum cleaner to blow the air in there and it does not need it and it gets very hot inside the furnace with this type of burner this is what I've got a copy today it's a cast iron cap it's got a deep pocket in there and I put a PVC sleeve on there to give a draft so it's machining allowance and then I can cut the thread afterwards the finished casting right here's the mould and there is that deep pocket it didn't break off and I like to pour them downwards like that 
instead of upwards they may break this one still may break so I better not count my chickens before they're hatched so we'll see what happens there is the other side there's another piece that goes with that cap
just finished pouring and I just scraped it in I don't think I've got enough for a wedge test maybe this is the box it's got the long skinny green core we'll see if it survived with the molten metal around it Yep, it survived. That's great. This is the result of today's pour. It's come out really nice. And what I'm particularly pleased with is that this part here is a green sand core and it didn't break off. It came out really nice. And the other thing is, there's the wedge test and I'll quickly break it and we'll see how that one turns out. Here are the wedge tests, they're grey all the way through even though it was a smaller wedge test but I need a really soft iron for this because I've got to machine all these castings especially in the lighter sections which are prone to chill 